wicked came to play to make me feel this way what a wicked thing to do to make me dream of you and I It's a joke, okay? <laughs> it's a joke. Relax. <laughs> Welcome back to Ever Disney Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Ever Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to be talking about George of the Jungle. George of the Jungle is a 1997 theatrical release. It's directed by Sam Weissman, cinematography by Thomas E. Ackerman, editing by <laughs> Roger Bondelli and Stuart H. Pep, music by Mark Shaman, and it's written by Dana Olson and Audrey Wells. Sam Weissman I covered in a video about D2 The Mighty Ducks. The link will be in the description. Thomas E. Ackerman is best known for superhero movie Rat Race, Back to School in this. Roger Bondelli is best known for The Ghost in the Darkness, Euro Trip, Moonlighting in this. Stuart H. Papp is best known for Double Team, Wild Hogs, Mr. and Mrs. Smith in this. Mark Shaman is best known for Smash, Hairspray, Mary Poppins Returns, and South Park, Bigger, Longer, and Uncut. Dana Olsen is best known for The Burbs, <laughs> Inspector Gadget, Henry Danger in this. Audrey Wells is best known for The Hate You Give, Guinevere, Under the Tuscan Sun, and this. The film is based off a 1960s cartoon called George of the Jungle and it is a ter Tarzan? 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 <laughs> parody. And George is supposed to be like the Tarzan character but he's dumb-ish and he's called on to save jungle problems etc. And Ursula, his love interest, is a Jane-like character and they just have random adventures in the cartoon. The film stars Leslie Mann, Brendan Fraser, Thomas Hayden Church, John Cleese, Keith Scott, Greg Crutwell and Abraham Ben Ruby, Leslie Mann, plays Ursula and is best known for Knocked Up, This Is 40, The Other Woman, and This. Brendan Fraser plays George and I covered him in the video about Encino Man, the link will be in the description. Thomas Hayden Church plays Lyle and is best known for Sideways, Spider-Man 3, Easy A, and Tombstone. John Cleese plays Ape and I covered him in the video about The Jungle Book, the link will be in the description. Keith Scott is the narrator and he's best known for The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle, Daybreakers, Dot and the Whale, and This. Greg Crutwell plays Max and is best known for Naked, Two Days in the Valley, Chunky Monkey, and this. Abraham Ben Ruby plays Thor, and he's best known for ER, Parker Lewis Can't Lose, The Program, and Open Range. The animals in the film were combined real puppet and CG. Shep, the elephant, uh, was mostly CG the entire time. There were a couple times it was a puppet, and then like two times it was a real elephant that they were actually riding. The lion was real, except for in the scenes where Brandon Fraser was fighting the lion, and then all the apes, like the big actual apes and ape, were all um, puppets. People were inside them and they had animatronic faces. The film had a $55 million budget and made $174.4 million in the box office, which is a success. It's got a 56% on, on Rotten Tomatoes and it received mixed reviews. People thought it was very faithful to the original show, which a lot of people said was actually part of the problem. That's why it wasn't as good as it could have been. Ebert actually really liked the movie. He thought it was funny and he praised the performances. There is a sequel. It was a direct -to video release and it's got a lot of new people in the cast. Brendan Fraser does not return. Leslie Mann does not return. But I'm pretty sure John Cleese and um, Thomas Hayden Church return. But I don't know. I've never seen it. I have to let you know I'm about to be extremely biased about this movie. I'm aware it's not a cinematic masterpiece. I'm aware it has flaws. I will mention a couple of them. But you need to know I love this movie. <laughs> I love this movie so much. I grew up loving Ursula and George and it's just a treat. I think this movie's really fun. But then in college, I actually saw a Tumblr post, which I will link down in the description, really breaking the movie down and talking about how it's truly from, they use the term female gaze. I'm going to say from the perspective of someone truly like actually attracted to men and not just men filming what they think people who are attracted to men want to see, if that makes any sense. And it's not like men trying to make it, or it's not from the perspective of people not attracted to men, trying to guess what people attracted to men want to see while also sexualizing for people who are attracted to women. 
Does that make sense? Um, and they break it down and it's so, it's such an excellent read to talk about how it's like what people who are attracted to men really actually want out of a man and how George is like what women actually want out of a man, like how he's gentle and you know, all that kind of stuff. It, it was fascinating to see it like broken down like that and how it was actually like revolutionary in the fact that yes, we're seeing like, Brendan Fraser is half naked, the majority of the movie, not even half naked, like 90% naked <laughs> in the movie and never once is Ursula scantily clad. She is fully clothed the entire time. It's never like tit for tat. It is, Brendan Fraser is 90% naked for 80% of the movie. And it talks about the importance of that and how it was a big deal. That being said, the film doesn't pass the Bechdel test. And the Bechdel test is when you have two women and more, more than one woman in the film, those two women have to speak and those two women have to talk about anything other than a man. And that's how a film passes the Bechdel test. And you would be utterly disgusted at how many movies don't pass the Bechdel test and, and this movie which is made from the gaze of people who are attracted to men and still doesn't pass the test it has like two women in the movie but all they do is talk about George so it has flaws but it also was kind of revolutionary in the fact that it only sexualized the male physique <laughs> yeah I don't know if that made any sense I adore this movie. I think it is harmless humor. I think it is so self-aware and it doesn't take itself seriously and that's what makes it so fun. The fact that the narrator breaks the fourth wall, people in the film break the fourth wall, people in the film talk to the narrator, the narrator talks to people in the film. The fact that like, and it's the, don't worry, no one dies in this movie or they only get really big boo-boos. Like what? And then, <laughs> like Thor having a fight with the narrator or like they were in awe, awe, awe as in A-W-E. Ooh, thank you. Like stuff like that. And then uh, George was looking pretty good and pretty darn good. Like all the breaks and like, they're so aware that they're a movie and that they're being silly. And I think that's what lets the humor of the film pass. I think if they didn't break the fourth wall and make it known that they know that they're being ridiculous, none of the humor would sell as well as it does. I think with the narrator and everyone in the film being very self-aware and know that they're like being ridiculous, it makes the humor sell. It sells everything. Now I will say there is some very stupid humor in this movie. The entire scene where George is beating up Max and Thor for trying to steal Ape is so dumb. The fart jokes and just the punching and all of it is so stupid. And that is bottom tier humor that was definitely for the kids. Like not what I find the most funny about the movie. I find the fourth wall breaks and the like the narrator saying what they're thinking and then the character verbatim saying what the narrator said. And like that kind of stuff is what I think is so funny or the looks or like, just there's humor I think for like like there's some intelligent clever humor there's some really stupid humor I think the humor's all over the board and I think all of it doesn't hurt anyone and I really love that and I just really love Ursula's arc I love that Ursula I love her react oh I just spit everywhere I love her reaction when every time she sees Lyle her like oh my god because that's how every one who was attracted to men feel about men like Lyle because that's terrifying. <laughs> He's terrifying. And the movie is just, has so much fun and so much heart and it doesn't, it doesn't take itself seriously. And that's what I love about it so much. And then it doesn't hurt that Brendan Fraser <laughs> is stunning in this movie. And it's amazing. <laughs> that doesn't hurt. It's like the cherry on top. It's like the icing on the cake. The movie is hilarious and it's a great time and George is a really sweet character that people who are attracted to men can totally appreciate his character if they don't find him attractive because there are definitely people who don't find Brendan Fraser attractive and that's totally fine. 
but they can understand the pieces of his character that are attractive, like his kindness and his gentleness and how he's willing to let Ursula like do whatever. And he's like, okay, I'll, I'll go with your lead. Like what, you know, like that kind of stuff, how it, he cares about her and like reads her signal and blah, 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 like, all that kind of stuff. You can be attracted to without being attracted, but <laughs> your girl is attracted to Brandon Fraser in this movie and it does not hurt <laughs> liking this movie and finding him attractive. <laughs> it is a great experience. It's a great experience. If you're attracted to Brendan Fraser in this movie and you think it's funny, top 10 out of 10 experience wise. <laughs> a clever joke I really like in this movie is all the women, not all the women, a bunch of women at Ursula's party are and Ursula are watching George try to like befriend a horse and he's in a billowy white shirt and it's like a big V and his hair is flowing and they're like, oh my God. And like 50 feet back, there are two men that are like, what is it with chicks and horses? Like completely <laughs> missing the fact that they're ogling the man. And I just love that so much because it's so funny. And then I also, like the pride rock, rock moment at the end, that's just, that's stupid, but it's so funny. I really like this movie if you're looking for a really fun time <laughs> and lighthearted, not taking itself too seriously film. I highly recommend George of the Jungle. I was trying to be realistic in the rating. So the film did get six. I gave it a six, six trees out of 10, but my enjoyment score is like an eight. I love this movie. <laughs> um, our total movie count is. Parent, that's home, crack counters the same. If you want to keep up with a movie I'm watching, with, follow me on Instagram or Twitter. You'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I put up videos every Monday and Friday and sometimes Wednesday. Join my Patreon. Lots of fun stuff going on over there. Tomorrow is the big announcement. The big fun announcement that I'm super excited for the big surprise. I'm super excited. Literally, I, I'm so excited. So check that out tomorrow. Until next time, comment, like, subscribe, and subscribe if you are, so you do, and don't be Lila about it. Bum ba dum ba dum, Inspector Gadget. Bum ba dum ba dum, bum bum.